Okay, I want to cover another couple. Again, I want to just try and cover all the computational stuff this week. Um, so um, I want to do a little quick thing on definite integrals. So, so far we have been talking about integrals of this form. And this is called an indefinite integral. And mostly it's indefinite in the sense that I always get this plus C in there. And really it's indefinite in the sense that there's this fuzziness about what the actual function is. I know that it is part of this family of functions, but um, I don't know exactly what function it is. Okay, so we use definite integrals when we're trying to find something concrete. And again, I like we're going to talk about the meaning of this. If you have seen this before, this is um, like going from velocity to position, or um, if you've seen calculating the area, we are going to do all that. So, but I just want you to know how to compute these things when you're asked to compute them. So definite integrals have the same similar form, except I have two numbers here and here, right? That are called the upper and lower limit of integration. And we're going to talk next week about where this idea comes from. We're going to do so much more. But right now, I really want us to concentrate on um, finding this value. So this will give you a very, um, like a, a concrete value. So this is the B in this case is the upper limit. A is the lower limit. And we usually read this as the integral from a to b of f of x dx, like out loud when we're reading it. Is this okay? So I just want to give you, again, um, a sense of what how you do this problem and it it is really straightforward so let's say i'm going to do um a straightforward problem and for x squared i'm going to do the integral from zero to three right okay so first of all the first thing you do is find the antiderivative so you do this indefinite integral the same way we've been doing. So there are not different rules, they're the exact same rules. I'm just gonna do one more step at the very end, right? So I'm gonna use this in like reverse power rule. So I have x to the two plus one, right? Over two plus one plus c. So x cubed over three, is this okay? Now, I have these over here that I don't want to lose track of, but I don't, I can't have the integration symbol anymore because I already integrated. So what people do is they switch these over and they'll have kind of an evaluation bar and they'll put this here, like that. Sort of similar, like it's similar notation to when we did derivatives, okay? So now I have this. To find this, I just take three and I plug it in. So I plug in, they call this like, let's say capital F of X is this guy. I'll find capital F of three and subtract F of zero. And we call this computation the definite integral. And again, this is linked to a lot of things. It has a lot of interpretations. We're gonna talk about them next week. I hope this is okay. Um, but I really want us to just, you to do some practice early on. So for this one, I'm gonna take three and I'm gonna plug it in wherever X is, like right here, right? So I'm gonna take three cubed over three plus C and I'm gonna subtract, that's f of three, zero cubed over three plus c. 
Is this okay? And so I'm just going to compute this. This should be really 27 over 3, which is 9, plus C, minus, and this is 0, plus C. Again, this 0 won't do anything, but you see here the C's are the same, because it the, the C's are really the solid function, and I really get 9 plus C minus C, the C's go away, and I'll get just the number 9. So these, like, are very lovely in the sense that you get a solid number um, out of this computation. Is that okay? I'm going to do maybe one more, but, like, it's literally kind of one extra step. So let's do the integral from, let's say, negative 1 to 2 of 4x squared plus x dx, right? And again, I'm going to integrate with the same rules that we have been doing for indefinite integration. So I get 4 out here, and then I'm going to do x cubed over 3 plus, and this is x squared over 2, and then I'm going to write these limits of integration, because I did this. Oh, I forgot my plus c. After a while, when you're doing um, definite integration, you kind of leave it off, but I, I just want to maybe put it in there right now. So, and again, I'm going to put the 4 times 2 cube, like, again, maybe I'll still write this. Again, I am thinking of this here as my capital F of X. And you'll see this notation a lot in here, in this chapter, in the sense that they call this a lowercase F of X, and the capital F of X is the antiderivative, right? So, and then I'm going to do capital F of 2 minus capital F of negative 1. So I'm just going to plug those in and compute. 4 times 2 cubed over 3 plus 2 squared over 2 plus C. That's F of 2 minus, and then the negative 1. 4 times negative 1 cubed over 3 plus negative 1 squared over 2 plus C. Good. And then I'm just going to actually compute this. So let's see, this is four, 2 cubed 8, right? So I think this is 32 over 3 plus 2 plus C. Check my math, because Y'all aren't here with me, but um, minus, and then this guy, the negative 1 cubed is negative 1, so I just have negative 4 thirds, and then the negative 1 squared is positive 1 half plus c. So I think it looks like this, but I think then these will add, so I'll get a plus 4 thirds and a minus 1 half. And a minus C, plus C here, plus 2, 32 thirds. So eventually I'll get this, ooh, 36 thirds, right? Which is nice, because that's a whole number. Plus 2, minus 1 half, so this should be 12, plus 2, minus 1 half, so that's... 14 minus a half is 13 and a half or 13.5. Is this okay? So this is definite integration. Hopefully it feels like just one tiny um, step. This, what we're using here is the fundamental theorem of calculus. We're going to spend time on this. Um, but again, I just, like, if we have covered this, we've covered almost all of the computations involved in integration that we're going to see in Calc 1. Um, and, uh, and hopefully give you all lots of time to practice this.